Okay, I'm now on Math Journal page 209. We're going to do 209 and 210. If you don't have these pages, you can print them out or you can just write them on a piece of paper. Remember, if I'm going too fast for you, pause the video. Or if you'd like to try and do the problems on your own, you can pause the video, then check your work. The directions say, for each number story, draw a picture, write a number model with a letter for the unknown, use a division algorithm to solve the problem, decide what to do about the remainder, record the answer, and write a number model with the answer. Okay, so drawing a picture. If you would like to draw a picture, you can, but we are not going to do that. But again, if it helps you, pause the video, do it. Write a number model with a letter for the unknown. That's what we'll do first. Use a division algorithm to solve the problem. We're going to use partial quotients and decide what to do with the remainder. Remember, there are three things we can do with the remainder. We can turn it into a fraction if the leftover is something we can divide. We're, we could ignore the remainder if we can't divide whatever's left over, or we might have to round up. Okay, and then we'll record the answer and write a number model with the answer. So let's look at number one. Jackson is buying balloons for a party. Balloons cost $6 per bunch. How many bunches can he buy with $75? Okay. So I have $75. I'm dividing that up into $6 each to figure out how many bunches of balloons he can buy. Again, if you'd like to pause and draw a picture to help you, you can. Now I'm actually going to show the work here. So $75 divided by 6. If you'd like to pause the video and see if you get the same answer I do, go right ahead. So I'm going to start with 7 divided by 6. I know that 6 can go into 7 one time because 1 times 6 is 6. So I'm going to put the 6 under the 7. That's what I've underlined. Then I'm going to fill in with a 0 for my placeholder. And whatever I do to the inside, I do to the outside. My next step is to subtract. I'm left with 15, which is bigger than 6, so I have to divide again. Let's see, 1 divided by 6, I can't do it because 1 is less than 6. 15 divided by 6. Well, if I think 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18. That's too big. So I'm going to go back to that 6 times 2 and say 6 can go into 15 twice because 2 times 6 is 12. Subtract, I'm left with 3. Okay, 3 is less than 6, so now I'm done dividing. I'm going to add up the outside, and I get 12. Now, what do I do with that remainder? Remember, my options are to turn it into a fraction, ignore it, or round up. Let's go back and look at the problem. Jackson's buying balloons for a party. They cost $6 per bunch. How many bunches can he buy with $75? So we really did $75 divided by $6. So my answer is that there's 12 bunches is what I can buy. And then there's $3 left over. Now, could I turn that into a fraction and say that I could get 12 and 3 6 bunches of balloons? Hmm, no, because I'm buying them per bunch. Should I ignore the $3 and just say I can only get 12 bunches? Or should I round up and say I can buy 13 bunches? What I really need to do is ignore the answer. Or, excuse me, ignore the remainder. I can't get 12 and 3 6 bunches of balloons because they only come in whole bunches. I can't round the answer up because I only have $3, so I can't get another bunch. So my answer is that I can get 12 bunches. The number model with the answer. So 75 divided by 6. Now, instead of putting an equal sign, when there's a remainder, we put an arrow. That means yields. Okay, so 75 divided by 6 yields or gives us 12 remainder 3. And what do I have to do with that 3? I ignore it. Number 2. 
Rosa is buying boxes to hold all 128 of her DVDs. Each box holds five DVDs. How many boxes are needed to store all of her DVDs? So my number model, 128 DVDs divided by five per box will tell me how many boxes I need. Again, draw a picture if you'd like to, or you can just skip that part, whoops, and show the work. So 128 divided up into groups of five. And let's start the division. So one divided by five, I can't do it. 12 divided by five, let's see. Five times one is five. Five times two is 10. Five times three is 15, too big. So that means 12 divided by five is two because two times five is 10, right at underneath the underlined 12. Zero on the inside, zero on the outside. Subtract, I'm left with eight and two. Okay, let's divide again. Two divided by five, can't do it. I can do 28 divided by five. I know five times four is 20. Five times five is 25. Five times six is 30, too big. So I know five can go into 28 five times. Five times five is 25. Subtract, I'm left with three. And because I cannot do three divided by five, I know I'm done. So my answer is 25 with a remainder of three. Okay, so my number model would be 128 divided by five yields 25, remainder three. But what does this mean? So I started with 128 DVDs and I'm putting them into boxes of five DVDs in each box. So this tells me that I need 25 boxes, but I have three DVDs left over. Okay, can I somehow split those DVDs up and turn them into a fraction? Probably not. Should I just ignore those three DVDs and just maybe put them off to the side? Well, I can't do that because it says that how many boxes do we need to store all of her DVDs? So what I need to do is actually round up. I need to say, okay, well, I need 25 boxes, but there's three DVDs left over. So it's really 26 boxes I need. Okay. I actually forgot to write down the Y's, but I was telling you the Y's. If we go back this first problem, why do we have to ignore it? Because $3 is not enough to buy another bunch. And for this next one, why did we have to round the answer up? An additional box was needed to store the three remaining DVDs. Okay, let's take a look at page 210. Latifa won 188 granola bars in a raffle. She decided to share them equally with her seven classmates and herself. How many granola bars did each person receive? Okay, think about what this number model should be, write it down for yourself, then check to see if it matches mine. 188 granola bars divided by, it says Latifa wants to share them between her seven classmates and herself. That means eight people. How many granola bars will they each get? 188 divided by eight. Again, you can do the division. Pause the video and then check your work. Can't do one divided by eight, but I can do 18 divided by eight. I need that eight times two is 16. So two times eight 
16, fill in with a 0, and a 0. Subtract, I'm left with 28. Hmm. 8 times 3 is 24, and I know if I did 8 times 4, that'd be too big. So 28 divided by 8 would be 3, because 3 times 8 is 24. Subtract, I'm left with 4. 4 is less than 8, so I can't divide again, so I'm done. My answer is 23 with a remainder of 4. So 188 divided by 8 yields, remember we don't put equals because there's a remainder, 23, remainder 4. Now, how many granola bars will each of them get? Well, they will each get at least 23 whole granola bars, but could I split those granola bars up as a fraction? I sure could. 4 would be my numerator. 8 would be my denominator. The 8 comes from here. 4 comes from here. So because I can divide granola bars up, their food, 23 and 4 eighths would be how many granola bars each student would get. Or maybe you've realized that, that would be 23 and a half granola bars. So what did I do with the remainder? I reported as a fraction. Why? Because the remaining four granola bars can be cut into pieces and shared. Alrighty. Last word problem. The cafeteria manager wants to put milk cartons into crates that hold eight cartons of milk each. She has 71 cartons of milk. How many crates will she need? Then problem B, Riley solved this problem and said the cafeteria manager needs eight crates. Is this correct? Explain your thinking. Okay. So we have 71 cartons of milk divided up into eight cartons per crate. Okay, let's do our division. Seven divided by eight, can't do it. How about 71 divided by eight? Okay. I'm gonna start with maybe eight times five, which is 40. I know that fact. Eight times six is 48. Eight times seven is 56. 8 times 8 is 64. I'm getting closer. 8 times 9 be 8 more, which is 72. That's too big. So I'm going to go back to this 8 times 8. So 71 divided by 8 is 8, because 8 times 8 is 64. When I subtract, I'm left with 7. 7 cartons of milk left over. So I will need 8 crates, but I have 7 cartons of milk left over. Should I just ignore those seven cartons? Should I turn them into a fraction? Or should I round up and say, uh, she'll actually need nine crates? The answer is I should round up. She will need nine crates. I can't just ignore those seven cartons of milk. Okay, she wants to put them all into cartons or into crates. Riley solved this problem and said, the cafeteria manager needs eight crates. Is she correct? Explain your thinking. What do you think? Is she correct? No, she's not correct. And explain why. Pause the video, write your response, and then push play. No, she needs nine crates. Since she had Seven remaining. It couldn't be ignored. Okay. Now we have two division problems, and it says solve each division problem using the partial quotients algorithm, then rewrite the remainder as a fraction. So I'd like you to try and do both of these problems by pausing the video, solving, then check your work.
Okay. 27 divided by 2. Start with 2 divided by 2, which is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 0 on the inside. 0 on the outside. Subtract and left with 7. 7 is bigger than 2, so I'm going to divide again. 7 divided by 2. Let's see. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. So it can go in 3 times because 3 times 2 is 6. Subtract and left with 1. I can't do 1 divided by 2, so I'm done. Add up the outside, I get 13. 1 is my remainder, so that becomes my numerator. 2 becomes my denominator. And one more. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. 0 on the inside means a 0 on the outside. Subtract and left with 7. Okay, 7 divided by 4. I know 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. That's too big, so let's go back to that 4 times 1, which is 4. Subtract and left with 3. 3 is less than 4, so I'm done. Add up the outside, I get 11. Numerator will be my remainder of 3. Denominator is my divisor of 4. 11 and 3 fourths.